Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3 Weather and Climate, Chapter 1, Lesson 3, Measuring Temperature. This lesson includes an investigation, and if you want to do the investigation along with me at home, you're going to need some materials. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a cup of ice water, a cup of tap water, and a cup of hot water. Ask an adult to help you get hot water. Adults, the water should be hot but not boiling because we're going to put our hands into the water and we don't want anyone getting burned. You'll also need a way to mark your cups. You can see I've used a sticky note and a marker to label each one of my cups, but you can label yours however you want. And you'll need this investigation notebook page. If you don't have this investigation notebook page, that's okay. You can use a piece of paper and a pencil to write down your observations. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so you may remember that we're working for the Wildlife Protection Organization. We're acting as meteorologists who are scientists who study weather to try to decide among three islands which one would make the best orangutan reserve. Remember, a reserve is a, a special area of land where animals can live and be protected. The organization sent us this data. Do you remember? We tried to compare all of the precipitation data for the three islands, but we couldn't compare it because they were all measured different ways. We did our own precipitation measurements and we compared them to a couple of friends and we found again it was really hard to compare since we didn't all use the same method of measurement. We found out that scientists use millimeters to measure rainfall and when we changed our measurements into millimeters it was really easy to compare and see who had collected the most rainfall and who had collected the least rainfall. Today we're going to be measuring and comparing temperature. The word temperature is one of our vocabulary words and it means how hot or cold something is. What do you know about temperature and how it's measured? Have you ever had any experiences in your life with temperature? I'll let you think about it for a minute. Could you think of any experiences you've had with temperature and how it's measured? I was thinking of how when I was a little kid and I felt sick, my mom would put this tool into my mouth and she would say, I'm gonna take your temperature. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Cool. Okay, we're going to do our investigation about measuring temperature. So again, for this, you're gonna need three cups or containers and a way to mark those cups. In those cups, you're gonna to wanna to put tap water, ice water, and hot water. And remember, please get an adult to help you if you're gonna put hot water into a cup. You do not want to put boiling water into the cup because you'll burn yourself and we're going to put our hands into the cup and touch the water. So the water should be a safe level of heat so that you can touch it. Okay, you're also going to need this investigation sheet that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This sheet can be found digitally on Amplify's website or it can be found in your student investigation notebook. But if you're watching this and you don't have this sheet, that's okay. You can always just write down your temperature observations on a piece of paper. If you wanna do this investigation on your own at home, you can pause the video right now and use these investigation uh, procedure steps to do the investigation on your own. If you're going to do that, pause the video now and follow the instructions. If you don't wanna do that, you can just keep watching and we'll do it together. Okay, let me expand my video so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I have my three cups. X has ice water. And Y has hot water. And Z has tap water, which is just water that came out of the faucet that's not really hot or cold. Let me put these where you can see them. Okay, so I'm gonna start with ice water, this, this cup X. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put my finger into cup X and just see how it feels. And then I'm gonna mark that observation on my, on my investigation sheet. Ready? Oh. Oh. oh my gosh, that's really cold. Oh, oh my goodness. 
Feels like a penguin diving into water over here. Ooh, okay, wow. Cup X is very cold. Wow. So I'm gonna dry my hand off. And then on my investigation sheet, I'm going to look at the choices for what I can circle as my observation. The choices are very hot, hot, a little hot, a little cold, cold, or very cold. Do you know which one I'm gonna pick? Yeah, I'm gonna pick very cold for cup X as my observation. Okay, so with that same finger that I just put into cup X, I'm gonna now put it into cup Z. Remember that cup Z is the tap water. It's not the hot water. So let's see, how do you think it's gonna feel to my finger to put it into this tap water? Let's find out. Oh, wow, it feels warm. Feels like putting my finger right into the bathtub after running a nice warm bath. Wow, that feels a lot better than cup X. Okay, so cup Z. Hmm, it's not very hot or hot. It's not very cold or cold. I would say it's warm. So I'm gonna circle a little hot on my observation sheet, okay? All right, now I used this hand to do cup X and cup Z. Now I wanna measure cup Y. Remember, this is the one that has the hot water. So I'm gonna take my other hand and use that as the new testing finger. Ready? Ooh, that feels nice. Feels like nice, steamy, hot water. Like when you've just run a piping hot bath and you're gonna get in and you're testing the water out with your finger first. It feels nice and hot, but it's not too hot. It doesn't feel like it's burning me. Okay, I'm gonna dry my finger off and I'm gonna come over here to my observation sheet. Cup Y, here are the choices. Very hot, hot, a little hot, a little cold, cold, or very cold. Which one do you think I'm gonna pick? I'm gonna pick hot. I would pick very hot if it was like burning my finger, but it's just hot. Okay, so this one is very cold and this one is hot. Now I'm gonna take the same finger that I just used in cup Y and I'm gonna put it into cup Z. Let's see how it feels. It feels chilly. That's so funny. Remember it felt warm with this finger? Now with this finger, it feels cool. Wow, interesting, okay. So I'm gonna go back to my observation sheet and I'm gonna mark that cup Z this time felt a little cold. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so which cup of water was the hottest? Do you know? Yeah, it was cup Y, the one that I put hot water into. Which cup of water was the coldest? Yeah, it was definitely cup X, the one that I put ice water into. Now, how could you measure temperature so that we could make comparisons? Remember when we were measuring rainfall, we wanted to be able to compare? Well, now I'm confused because cup Z felt warm the first time and it felt cool the second time. So how can I actually take a real measurement of the temperature of all of these cups? Do you have any ideas? Okay, this is a tool called a thermometer. A thermometer is used to measure temperature. Have you ever heard of a thermometer before? Maybe you have. A thermometer has two sides. One side has an F for Fahrenheit, and the other side has a C for Celsius. These are two different systems of measurement. Here in America, we use Fahrenheit. Most countries in the world use Celsius. But since we're in America, we're gonna be taking all of our measurements using Fahrenheit. Okay, so let me show you how to make a reading off of a thermometer. A thermometer has this red liquid inside of it, and when it gets hot, the red liquid rises up, and when it gets cold, the red liquid sinks down. And so by looking at the end of the red liquid and comparing it to these numbers on the side, we can take a measurement. So you can see that these long lines go up 
by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. In between are these shorter lines. These shorter lines are twos. So we would count up, for example, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So the way that you take a measurement is you go to the end of the red line and you compare it to these lines and you take a measurement. Can you figure out the measurement in degrees Fahrenheit of this measurement on the thermometer? I'll give you a second to look. Do you have your answer? This is showing about 44 degrees. And here's how I found that answer. I saw that it was the red line went past 40, but it didn't go all the way to 50. So I'm gonna start at 40 and I'm gonna count up by twos until I get to the end of the red line. So 40, 42, 44. See how the red line stops right here? That tells me that this is a measurement of 44 degrees. Let's practice. I'll give you a second to look at this thermometer and decide what you think the measurement is in degrees Fahrenheit. What did you get? I got 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I went to the top of the red line and it stopped right here at one of these long lines that's marked with a 60. So that one was pretty easy. You wanna try a second one? Great. What did you get? I got 88 degrees Fahrenheit. I went to the end of the red line. I saw that it was more than 80, but less than 90. So I started at 80 and I counted up by twos. 80, 82, 84, 86, 88. Let's try another one. What did you get? I got 21 degrees. If you go to the end of the red line, it looks almost like it's exactly at 20, but it goes up just a little bit, but not all the way to 22. So I marked this as 21 degrees. If you said 20 or 22 or something close, that's okay. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to read exactly where the red line is. All right, so we wanna take some actual thermometer measurements of the temperature of our three cups that we tested with our fingers earlier. If you want to measure these on your own at home and you have thermometers, great. You can pause this video right now and use these directions to do so. If not, you can just keep right on along with me and we'll measure together. Let me expand my screen and show you what I'm going to do. So I've got my ice water in X and I've got my hot water in Y and I have my tap water in Z and I'm going to take Make sure you can really see these here. And then I'm just going to take a thermometer and place a thermometer in each one. Now, here's a little tip about using thermometers. It takes a minute for them to show a measurement. You can't just pop it in and then boom, the measurement comes out. You have to give the red liquid inside a couple of minutes to get up to where it's going to show you an accurate, which means correct, measurement. So I'm going to give these a minute and we'll come back together in a second and check them. Okay, welcome back. My thermometers have been sitting for a few minutes and now I'm ready to take a reading. So let's start with X, which was the ice water. You can see I put the thermometer in and I really zoomed in so that you can take a reading for yourself. I'll give you a minute to look at it and you tell me what you think cup X is. What do you think? I thought it was about 44 degrees. I got that by starting at 40 and counting up by twos until I got to the end of the red line like this, 42, 44. If you said 43 or something really close, that's okay. We don't have to be exact right now. So I made a little table for us to put our investigation data into. 
For cup X, I put 44 degrees because that's the measurement we just took. Now let's do cup Y. I'll give you a second to look at cup Y and read the measurement. What'd you get? I thought it looked like about 95 degrees. I started at 90 and then I counted by twos, 92, 94. I didn't think it went all the way to 96. So, but I thought it went a little past 94. So I said 95. If you said somewhere in there, great. So in our temperature investigation for cup Y, I'm putting 95 degrees. Now let's do cup Z. I'll give you a second to try to guess cup Z. What'd you get? I thought it looked like about 66 degrees. I started at 60 and then I counted up by twos, 62, 64, 66. So of these three cups, which cup of water was the hottest? Yeah, it was cup Y. When you put the measurements all in the same unit, you can easily tell which one is the hottest. It was cup Y. Which cup of water was the coldest? Yeah, it was cup X. Again, it's really easy to compare these three measurements because they're all in the same unit, which is degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I want you to try something. I want you to visualize in your mind how hot or cold you think 50 degrees Fahrenheit is. If you were describing this temperature to a friend, how would you describe it? I'll give you a minute. Okay, I wanna show you some temperature benchmarks that might help you decide how hot or cold 50 degrees would feel. So 93 degrees Fahrenheit, right here at the top of the temperature benchmarks, is actually pretty hot. 93 degrees Fahrenheit is the melting point for chocolate. So if you've ever held chocolate in your hand, it starts to melt because our bodies are even warmer than 93. 70 degrees Fahrenheit is the average temperature of most buildings that we're in. So your home or your school building, places like that, humans feel really comfortable at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature of most people's refrigerators. So when you get a nice cold drink out of your fridge, it's usually at about 40 degrees. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit, do you know what that is? That's the temperature that water freezes into ice. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit is considered freezing. So now that you know that 50 degrees would be somewhere in here, does that change how you think 50 degrees might feel? Cool. So here are some new ideas that I learned today. Last time we learned that scientists use millimeters to measure rainfall so that the data is easy to compare. And my question from the last investigation was, is there a common me measurement for temperature? I'm so excited because my question from last time got answered today. Scientists do use a common measurement for temperature. My new idea for today is that scientists use degrees to measure temperature using a thermometer. This makes temperature data easy to compare and to visualize. My question moving forward is, which of the three islands is the hottest and rainiest? Because now that we know how to easily measure rainfall and temperature, we need more data in order to decide which of those three islands would be the best for the reserve. I can't wait to see you next time. Looking forward to it. Signing off, stay curious.